Hello, this is lecture two of the Descriptive Grammar course. Uh, this lecture I think we're going to divide into four parts. Uh, so I will talk a little bit more about uh, parts of speech which you require for the first exercise on the second set of exercises. And then uh, we'll go through the, that exercise. Uh, and then I'll make a separate film talking about nouns, which you'll need for the two uh, subsequent exercises. Uh, and then another film going through those exercises. Okay, so we'll do it bit by bit. Uh, one other thing I wanted to say just generally about the course, which I didn't mention before. Um, the, the main focus is going to be on your ability to do things practically with descriptive grammar, although descriptive grammar is a theoretical subject. I think it's more useful for you uh, in, your, in, in your use of English um, that you're able to do things practically. So I'm not giving you a lot of information about the theory, but I thought about that, that maybe, maybe I should give you a little more. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to give you uh, some very brief notes about the theory. Um, not, not, not to read, just not, not uh, long, long things to read, just uh, brief kind of bullet point type notes, um, which, and th this theory is not really what we will test in the exam, okay? So in the exam, you will do the sorts of exercises that we do now in these exercise sets. But some of you may feel a little better if you've got something to read about the grammar, just, just as a sort of guide. Um, it's a little difficult for me doing lectures in this form because I don't get the feedback uh, instantly. When I give a normal lecture, I can see whether people's faces are blank or whether people are, are nodding and writing notes and they understand. Um, okay, so thinking about what we did last time, I'm not sure whether we did enough uh, about the theory behind parts of speech. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about one or two things Connected with that, which I have here on my on my second computer. Um, so we're going to talk more about nouns in the second part, and we'll do more work with those more familiar parts of speech, uh, such such as adjectives and verbs later on. I've got a few little things that I, I ought to just say about some of the other parts of speech which you might not know so well. Um, so if we if we begin with today uh, with determiners, okay. Uh, determiners, I, I mentioned last time, right, that determiners are things like articles and also words like that and this when they come before a noun, okay, as in this computer and that computer. Okay, so they are determining which one. But determiners are a little more complicated than that. And again, this is, uh, this is the theory which, which I think is interesting. You may disagree. Um, so we can also have things which are called predeterminers and things which are called postdeterminers. So predeterminers, as the prefix pre tells you, are determiners which come before other determiners. Okay? Think about that for a moment. So when I say half, right, and I say something like uh, half the food, okay, the is obviously a determiner. And this half is a predeterminer. Okay. Okay. Uh, whereas post determiners uh, are determiners which come after the main determiner, let's say. Um, so, again, different words can be described in different ways. So, we can take numbers, uh, or, uh, ordinal numbers like first can be considered determiners as well, okay? So we can say, uh, so there's an example, something like the first good book he wrote, okay? So in the, the expression the first, um, we can say that the first is operating as a post-determiner, okay? Before the adjective, but after another determiner. These are sorts of examples that the theory behind it is not so important. What's more important is that when you come to uh, to do an exercise that you see, oh, I've got two things here, which one is definitely determined. I'm not really sure what the other one is. 
uh, but I can't have two determiners together. Well, the fact is that you can have two determiners together, uh, but one of them will be considered like the, the main determiner. So this will normally be something like the, um, and other words can be considered pre or post determiners. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to get into the details of with articles of determin uh, of uh, definite and indefinite articles. That's something that you should have. You should be familiar with from uh, practical English lessons. Um, obviously, articles are something which cause uh, Polish students a lot of problems. Those of you who are learning French or German uh, will have the same problems in French and German. Um, those of you who are learning Russian, will <laughs> you just have to learn it for English. Um, okay, so I, I don't think there's anything else to say about determiners, but. Uh, uh, the, the only other thing is, is, as I said, that words like this and that are sometimes determiners, but they're often not determiners, so you have to be careful. Whereas words like a and the are, are basically always going to be determiners. Uh, although, as I said last time, in English, basically any word can be used in a different way. There used to be a pop, get, pop band called The The. Uh, you can look them up on YouTube. Um, so if you have The The, uh, it appears that the second the is a noun uh, and the first the is a determiner. Uh, so, such, such things can be done in English. Uh, okay. When it comes to pronouns, okay, there are many, many different types of pronouns. Now, I don't expect you to learn the list. You don't need to learn the list. Uh, I mentioned some of them last time. So personal pronouns we know very well. I, we, these kinds of things. Um, and there are possessive pronouns and there are reciprocal pronouns. Reciprocal is like one to the other, okay, so each other, one another. Uh, reflexive pronouns are things like myself, himself, yourself, okay. You should know relative pronouns, who, where, which, things like that. Um, and there are more, and I, I, will, I will send you this, the, the list, but as I said, I, I don't expect you to learn the list. I'm not going to ask you questions in the exam, such as how many types of pronouns are there. Okay. The only important thing about this list is that you can see that there are many different types of words which still count as pronouns. Okay. Um, so there are also words like some and any. So when we, when we use the word some without a noun, okay, uh, we say, I want some, then it's a pronoun because it's standing in place of a noun. Okay. If we use it with a noun, then it's working as a determiner, just like this and that. Yeah, I want some cake, so it's, then it's determining the cake. Uh, and as I mentioned last time, there are also things called universal pronouns, everything, nothing, something, uh, which people usually think are nouns, um, if you think about, I don't know, the, the, the idea that nothing is a noun, well, nothing is a thing, that, that's kind of silly. Uh, anyway, they're, they're treated as, as pronouns, okay? Um, do we need to talk about anything else? Prepositions, I think, are pretty, pretty simple. Um, prepositions can do different things syntactically, but they always pretty much look the same. Uh, Okay, which which brings us on to what else have we got? We're not going to talk about nouns for this moment. Adjectives, I think, are relatively simple, and uh, we we will talk more about adjectives later on. Adverbs, uh, of course, the one thing to remember with adverbs is that normally they end ly, but they don't have to end ly. So there is a group of adverbs in English. Words like hard and fast, which are adverbs which don't end ly. Um, and of course, then you can get into trouble that there is the word hardly, but the word hardly is not the adverb from hard, right? So that, that can be confusing. The other thing which can be confusing with adverbs, of course, is that there are a number of adjectives which end ly. So we have adjectives like friendly, uh, so there is no adverb from friendly. We can't say friendlily. That would be silly. Um, we also have uh, adjectives like holy, lowly. 
these types of words, obviously you can't make an adverb by putting ly on the end. Sometimes, if you need to make an adverb from such words, you can do so by simply using a synonym. Okay. Um, but that, obviously that, that's not really making an adverb from that word. I'm just talking about in, in practical situations. But at the same time, it's always possible in English to say in a something way. Okay, so uh, we have the ad adjective friendly. We want to use it in an adverbial sense. So we can say in a friendly way. He looked at me in a friendly way. Okay, um, so there's always a, an option when you're writing, uh, when you want to express yourself. If you're not sure how to form the adjective, you can do it in that way, uh, how to form the adverb. Okay, um, but generally speaking, adverbs, you should be able to recognize an adverb, even if it looks the same as an adjective, uh, you should be able to recognize it because it is describing a verb, generally speaking. We will talk more about special types of adverbs uh, in a later lecture, but that's the basic distinction. Uh, there are a number of words which are a little um, different from the, the LY construction, which we will... I think rather than trying to give a list, we'll just come to those uh, as we meet them and discuss them. Sometimes one can get the impression that everything that doesn't really fit uh, anywhere else gets called an adverb. Uh, this, this, this may be true. Um, the particular type of adverbs that I just, just want to mention, so um, when we have an expression like, I had seen him before, okay, so the before tells us when you had seen him. So what adverbs do is they tell us when, where, and how something happened, okay? So I had seen him before, before is an adverb, okay? Uh, I'll see you later, later is an adverb, okay? So these are not adverbs formed from adjectives, but these are uh, adverbs which are describing when or how or where something is going to happen, okay? So we will see examples of those. And the problem with those is that very often those words are also used, words like before, uh, before is also a preposition, uh, and before can also uh, be a conjunction, okay? So we need to be careful. We'll see examples of those in the, uh, in the exercise that we're going to look at, okay? If anybody has any more questions about that, then please get in touch with me and let me know. Um, generally speaking, a lot of these categories are the same across languages. So uh, you, you've, you've studied at school parts of speech in Polish, you've studied in the languages that you're, you're focusing on now. So most of those differential differentiations between the categories should be fairly uh, familiar to you. But there are always individual words which cause problems. It's easier, I think, to look at those words in examples so what I want you to do now is to have a look at the first exercise in set two and uh, try to complete that exercise yourself. Once you've done that, uh, then have a look at the next video, which will be me explaining uh, the answers and uh, trying to explain where they come from, not just giving you the answers, right? I could just give you the sheet of answers, but then you'd be left with the question why. So I'll go through and try to explain them. Okay, so that's what's coming next.